Hi, it's Lachlan Gardner here. I'm a professional photographer and filmmaker based in Brisbane, Australia. For the past three and a half years, I've been shooting full-time on the Lumix S-Series system. I was super excited to get hands-on with the next camera in the lineup, the S5 Mark II. Essentially, this camera is like a blend of the S1H and the existing S5, with a heap of improved specs and additional features. For the past few days, we've been out in the field to shoot some action sports content with the S5 Mark II. Predominantly, I was testing the performance of the new hybrid autofocus system, along with how the S5 II handles capturing high frame rate stills of some fast moving subjects. First up, we captured fast paced action with a couple of mountain bike athletes at their local bike park. The second adventure sport we shot was some mountain running in the scenic rim with a trail running athlete. The S5 Mark II incorporates Panasonic's newly developed phase hybrid autofocus system. This system utilizes on-sensor phase detect in combination with Panasonic's contrast detect system and advanced human and animal eye detection algorithm. The result combines the best of these technologies, offering photographers super fast, reliable autofocus that can cope with complex scenes and detect a wide variety of both human and non-human subjects. Another major improvement for sports and action photography is the increased frame rate of the stills burst mode. It's still very easily selectable via a dedicated and programmable shooting mode dial on the top of the camera. By switching to the electronic shutter mechanism, the S5 II captures full-size stills at 30 frames per second with full continuous autofocus and subject tracking. By using high-speed SD cards like the V90 cards I've been recording to, you can capture up to 200 RAW and JPEG frames per burst, which in the real world translates to plenty of time to freeze the action. Here's some examples of our mountain bikers shredding the park and our trail athlete running across some epic but uneven mountain terrain. The cameras have been no trouble locking onto the subject and holding focus throughout the burst. Even in complex scenes like this with strong backlighting, the hybrid autofocus system is staying locked onto the subject. This is a scene or scenario that the previous generation of autofocus from Lumix could have struggled with, but as you can see, the hybrid phase system is having no issues. The S5 Mark II carries forward and builds upon the various autofocus modes from the existing S-Series lineup. For both of these sports, I was shooting continuous autofocus and then depending on the scene, I switched between tracking, full area and zone. In all of these modes, you can also easily toggle subject detection on and off as required. After several days testing in the field, our findings have been that the new hybrid autofocus system in the S5 Mark II is fast and reliable. It's proving to be more than up to the task that adventure, sports, action and wildlife photographers will encounter. Personally, I'm stoked and can't wait to use it more. For those times when creating a high resolution image file is the ultimate priority, the S5 Mark II has the most advanced in-camera high resolution mode in the industry. This mode utilizes the IBIS system to shift the sensor between a sequence of images, in turn creating a 96 megapixel final image file that is four times the resolution. The results are instantly viewable on the camera's playback screen and motion compensation mode can be applied when capturing. For landscapes, commercial advertising and product work, this can be invaluable. Situations where clients, agencies and designers are often seeking the largest possible file to work with. The live composite mode is a feature that allows users to capture multiple exposures in a single image file. Some classic scenarios where this might be useful are long exposures, night scenes, and things like star trails, city lights, or fireworks. After taking the initial exposure, the camera then only records new light sources in the preceding captures. This in turn produces an image where the highlights of static objects don't overexpose, but only added lights or movement is captured and added to the frame. 